You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor. Subscribe to the channel. Leave your comments below. Be sure to smash that like button. Brody Miller, the athletic, good enough to jump aboard with us here. Brody, great to have you, man. How are you? I'm doing all right. Thanks for having me, Matt. Uh, our pleasure. So the uh, Brian Kelly Walker Howard video, they just showed it on NFL Live. Uh, <laughs> NFL Live. NFL Live. Uh, and uh, it's got 3.6 million views on Twitter right now. What do you think about it? Okay, honestly, like I get why people want to make jokes. That's fine. Like I, I mean, make all the jokes anyone wants. I can care less. But like my immediate assumption when I saw that is it just reeked of Walker Howard's about to hop on that like spinny thingy like every other recruit, and he's probably like, "Coach, you got to hop on there with me." And like he did, you know, like yeah. that's what it reeked of to me. Like I, I think people trying to act like trying too hard. I'm like, what are you talking about? You guys overthink this stuff. Like I even saw people being like, "Man." It's going to hurt recruiting. It's embarrassing. And I'm like, <laughs> the five-star quarterback tweeted, that's my coach. <laughs> the only evidence we have is that it's helping recruiting. I don't know what to tell you. It's got 3.6 million views, man. Are you kidding me? It's so good. Yeah. Like, it looks like my dad trying to dance. I, it's endearing. Oh, I freaking like, you got to laugh at it, man. He looks like an awkward old guy trying to dance. But respect to him. He jumped into it. Absolutely. I'm like, hey, man, people are worried about if he's going to recruit hard. Well, he just embarrassed himself in front of 3.6 million people to get a quarterback. That is success. Uh, and growing, by the way. Uh, 3.6 million and growing. That's, that's better than like all primetime TV does right now uh, on the weeknight. Okay, so look, early signing day is tomorrow. I don't know how deeply you follow this sort of stuff, but what do you get a sense being you know, ear to ground around the program, how they feel here on the eve of the early signing period with a lot of ground to make up in a short amount of time? Yeah, because I think the like I think you pretty much put it well. Where I think the key with this week is not even about like bringing in some top five class as much as it is holding ground a little bit, right? Okay, they're gonna still land their their key cornerstone guys in Howard and Campbell, their five star Louisiana kids. You know, they're gonna you know still sign probably I don't know as many as five six top two hundred recruits. You know, this week they're they're in good shape it's not going to be a top five class as of now no but i think you i think they feel decent that they're going to hit on some of their biggest guys maybe get a quincy wiggins maybe get a kendrick law some of these pretty pretty big recruits you know this week that that they won and then you know you're still going to be going into the rest of the next two months with 12 spots left you know you're going to hire some new staff that probably gives the bolster uh, bolster to recruiting and you're honestly probably going to sign as many as five transfers this year especially on the offensive line and then you have you know your time to focus on your Trevante citizens your Jacoby Matthews of the world in February so yeah i don't think tomorrow is going to be some home run success for LSU but i think it's going to be a stable day uh, you mentioned staff. There's a few things that we've seen today. There's a report out there about uh, Brad White becoming the defensive coordinator target. But there's another report I know that Bruce Feldman at The Athletic had about um, DJ Mangus not being retained and Carter Sheridan will coach receivers for the bowl game. Uh, LSU just just within the last hour released this. Dr. Matt Frakes has been hired as the assistant athletic director of sports nutrition. Bro, do you think that's very evident is... This is a complete overhaul of the LSU football program, and I would assume this is intentional. What have you heard with respect to how Brian Kelly is trying to make out, make over the entirety of the football program? Yeah, you know, it's been fascinating because there are still, you know, major coaches on that staff who, as of yesterday or Monday, Sunday, still hadn't even heard from Brian Kelly. So, and one thing I was told from day one is he is kind of going to go on his own schedule here. You know, he's not going to just rush to make moves to help, you know, the, the public optics real quick or anything like that. That has been something I gather. And, you know, do I think he went in day one and said, I'm trying to get rid of Corey Raymond and Kevin Falk or anything like that? No, but I do think this was a program that's been in trouble for a few years. And I do think Brian Kelly was kind of hired to, I don't know, shuffle some things up, fix the culture. And I mean, I'm not saying... Corey Raymond or Kevin Fox specifically are, are bad for culture, but there clearly has been a desire to kind of, you know, reshuffle things, move on to the future and whatnot. I mean, the only guy 
confirmed to be kept on right now is Brad Davis. And he's the guy who only joined in June. So he doesn't really clearly count as the old staff in a lot of ways. So I do think that's a real thing. And I do think with the, with the staff that, you know, has been both rumored and the ones that have already been hired is there's kind of a, I don't know, a, a, not a rush, you know, they're, they're, you know, coordinator, for example, they're taking their time on it. And yeah, there's connections to some guys who are, you know, in the playoff and things like that, that you're watching for. But I, I think he's kind of taking his time here because signing day seems stable and the rest he just wants to make the best hire. Uh, Brody Miller's with us. He's on Twitter at Brody A. Miller, The Athletic. I read his stuff. Follow him on Twitter. I want you, you mentioned something at the beginning that I want you I want to underscore this because I've mentioned this a few times and so, there is some skepticism. You said that there are members of the staff that still have not heard from Brian Kelly. Can you elaborate there? Because I like it seems almost implausible to think that, but literally, I mean, Mickey Joseph, Corey Raymond, Durante Jones, like these are people that I'm very confident in saying, Tommy Moffitt, that like, didn't hear from Brian Kelly. Yep, exactly. Yeah, I mean, and you named some of the main people. I, I, last I heard, Blake Baker, too. And I don't, I don't want to, like, I want to be careful that I'm not speculating what that means. But usually when you haven't heard from that long, Sometimes you almost assume they're saying, hey, go take something else. So, you know what I mean? And and that is what happened with Mickey Joseph. That is what happened with a Corey Raymond and, and others like that. So it is fascinating, I guess, to see how that is exactly being handled. And, and, and I know, and I think you said this too, there's a little element of wanting to evaluate guys throughout bowl season and kind of like see how they do. Or there's also an element of, hey, certain guys might not get kept on, but you still want to keep things stable through the early signing period and get some of these recruits. But, yeah, I think there's been some frustration in the building, quite frankly, and, and I, I don't think that's not a factor in the Corey Raymond situation, for example, that, that there is a frustration that certain guys haven't been contacted. Uh, Brady Miller is with us here. I, and I, just to be clear, Brian, it, Brian Kelly can run his program how he wants. He, he's been successful in a lot of places. Whether there's a right or wrong way to do it, we'll find out in time. But he can run his program how, how he wants to run his program. I think he's they're paying him, and he's earned that right. I, I just wanted to go on the record so people know where I stood with that. All right, I got a couple more things. Let's talk about the team itself uh, that's preparing for this bowl game. Number one, I got to get your thoughts on, on Damone Clark. Um, to this point, he's been snubbed by every All-American team. Um, maybe that doesn't matter to many, but I, I think it's... Kind of absurd. This guy's not going to get any first-team All-America honors. You saw him play this year. What do you think? I think I'm simultaneously surprised he's not an All-American, you know, just because if you ask me, I'd pick him as one. At the same time, not surprised that a guy on a 6-6 six and six team isn't necessarily getting the most attention. You know, it's probably somewhere in the middle yeah. where, yeah, I'm pretty surprised just because he's a Buckets Award finalist. Like, you know, and most indications are he's probably the runner-up, you know? I mean, we don't have proof of that. But So if he's probably the second best linebacker in the country, but then not one of the five or six based by every All-American team, and by the way, including the athletics, you know, I, I made a case, but he didn't get picked on ours as well. It is surprising. I think he played really great football. I will say at the end of the day, I have heard more about, you know, from both Dane Brugler, the athletic staff, and other people that his draft stock is doing just fine. And I guess at the end of the day, that's all that really matters. And I think there's a lot of indications he's somebody who could go as high as first or second round. He's probably going to be a superstar at the combine, one would assume, because he's a physical freak. And, uh, yeah, I think he's going to be all right. But, yeah, it, it's surprising. And, and I, think, uh, I think a lot of it just goes down to people see – player on good team and automatically put people there instead of really watching football. Yeah. It's it's unfortunate, man. I he like you said he's going to be fine. He, I'm sure he he'd much rather the high draft stock, but when accolades are earned, they should be given and I think he's getting screwed this year, but it's what it is. And shoot, Neil Farrell too, by the way. Neil Farrell wasn't even on yeah. like most all SEC teams. And yeah, Neil Farrell crazy. was as good as any interior lineman. That's crazy. Um who's going to play quarterback for the bowl game? <laughs> yeah, man. So obviously uh you know, offensive line coach Brad Davis came out today saying they are trying to find a way to have him play and keep his red shirt. There is not any precedent that I have found of allowing that. I guess the only case, positive case you could say is there's really not much precedent for the times we're living in right now where, you know, you have coaches changing every day and quarterbacks transferring earlier and earlier. So there's not much precedent for a situation where you have no scholarship quarterbacks because both quarterbacks transfer. Like we're in weird times. So maybe there is a little bit of that gets benefit of the doubt. And you also add in, hey, three of those four games he played were an old coach kind of mishandling a situation. You know, maybe they could get a waiver, but history says no. So I don't. I think that's a tough one to assume. And 
you know, I know there's been some rumors with Miles Brennan maybe flirting with LSU again. I'm not going to speculate there. But, I mean, at some point you just kind of have to play the odds, and I kind of have to assume it's maybe going to be, hey, you, you'll go to the walk-ons and you let something, you know, let John Shea Kirkland have fun for a few drives and yeah. see what happens. Uh, have you put pen to paper, or, or do you know what the roster numbers might look like for the bowl game? I, I will not lie to you and pretend I have an actual number, but yeah, I mean, I, I do, and I know you know as well, that it's probably going to be pretty low. You have the opt-outs going on. You have, you know, I think we're still waiting on a lot of finals results and things like that, but still expecting some academically ineligible players this week or, I mean, in the bowl game. So, yeah, I, I think it's going to be, you know, maybe not Florida 2020 level, but not that far from it for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, and got to wait all the way till, till January fourth as well. So it uh, you bump up against Senior Bowl, Combine prep stuff like that. It it, well, it it's going to be an interesting storyline to follow over the next three weeks. Uh, suffice to say, uh, you can follow along at uh, the Athletic. He's Brody Miller on Twitter at Brody A Miller. Great LSU coverage. We appreciate a couple of minutes as always, man. Thanks so much for making time. Thanks for having me, though, man. Take care. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.